Hello and welcome back. Sean here, Mountains Garage, on a rainy Tuesday morning, early. I'm continuing to work on this street rebuild 480E transmission, two wheel drive. When we last saw it, we had stripped the internals out of it and the case still needed some work. Uh, starting with the wiring harness was still in it. I take an inch and a quarter socket, go over the outside of the plug, which releases the tangs. If you want to, you can just tap in your socket with a rubber hammer and it'll pop the case connector out without damage. It has an O-ring on it that you need to change if you're reusing the harness. That's uh, a pretty big hole inside of the case, <clears throat> but this will assure that you don't hurt the case connector, which is important. I use this tool that my buddy John made me. Uh, it's a half inch pipe nipple with a knot welded on it. To thread into the filter seal, you thread it all the way down. If you continue to turn it, it probably pops the seal out, but I just wind it all the way in and wiggle it and usually pops it out. I haven't tried bottoming it out, but I bet you could. Maybe that's what the nut's for. I never did ask him. He was just nice enough to make it and send it to me. The neutral safety switch was still bolted on the outside of the case. And the problem with these is two different versions. One has two plugs and the later ones have a single plug. But whatever the switch itself is potted with or made with is glue in there or some type of resin that as the transmission heats up over the years, it leaks down into the plugs, which makes Plug removal, not impossible, but without heat it is. But if you carefully warm up the outside of the plug, excuse me, outside of the neutral safety switch, you could get the plug out. Uh, the plugs fared very well and are definitely reusable. I hang on to stuff like this if I'm doing a wiring conversion or whatever, you know, LT LS swap. Sometimes you need the other plug. The uh, Wire colors are compatible. You just need to either have a single or a dual plug. Uh, the switch, probably still usable, but I wouldn't. It got kind of warm. It's rusty. It's somewhat separated, you know, just from the rust. The shift shaft was stuck pretty well inside. These are, you know, $30. Probably not worth messing with. And again, you got to match it up to whatever harness you have. I managed to get out my broken front speed sensor. I had wiggled it and this part came out. This was still stuck in the case. But with the internals you know, removed, I was able to tap this out on the inside, no big deal. Uh, the shift shaft itself, I took out in one piece, put it in the vise, <clears throat> heated up the nut and was able to get the arm off and clean up the shift shaft itself and the shift shaft is fine. It'll live another day. Uh, the best part of this, I had some time on my side and this is the linkage bracket. I've straightened it out during the process of removing it. It actually goes like that. Uh, these two pan bolts go all the way down through and the Torx headed bolts that hold this on you know, come up from the other side in the car, they'd be down from the floorboard. And I took a look at them and they looked pretty round. However, I took a pick. I had some time. I didn't want to fire up the torch. It was late at, later at night and I was going to call it quits, but I was able to tap out the center and drive a socket in there and said, okay, I'm going to fill these cavities, these bolt holes up with penetrating oil. And I let it sit for like a day and a half because I had the time, it was the weekend, and when I came back out, I flipped the transmission up, I put a pair of vice grips on the outside of the nut, and the torque socket and my impact on the bolt itself, and I broke the first one loose, and then it was over because I could wiggle the whole bracket, which helped me break the second one loose. So I feel pretty lucky about that, I didn't have to break out the welder. Again, it was late. I, when I weld anything or fire the torch up or anything with fire or heat, 
I'm not just going to go back in the house. So, but this was, shall we call it, non-destructive removal. And now I can throw these away and the gentleman with the transmission gets himself a nice case. I never broke any bolt holes. I spent way too much time. And, you know, that's one of the things if you're estimating how long this is going to take and you haven't seen the transmission, it's hard to tell how rough it is. And this one, again, it looked at first glance pretty decent. However, you can see the stain on this case. This was all white corrosion. The factory reusable pan gasket has a, a ridge in the middle, which leaves the open area between the ridge and the outside of the case. I mean, it's pretty tight, but obviously in the Northeast, salt water can get up in there. And up here, it's extremely pocky even, like it's rough and so is this corner of the case. Obviously there was wheel splash or something really concentrated on that corner of the case. Perfectly usable, but things you need to watch out for. So with the case finally stripped, uh, I cleaned it of course, and gave it a coat of paint. Oh, I didn't mention the rear. Let me bring you around. There are two seals. One is around the output shaft, has a snap ring, holds it in, easy to change. And then there's this cup over here with an O-ring on it. This actually seals to the tail housing, and this provides the oil for the rear bushing. There's a, a passage in the tail housing, and this is known as a solid shaft. So if you have the spread cooler lines, you have the solid shaft and you need pressurized lubrication. It works really good. The bushing back here is typically in good shape because instead of just relying on, you know, splash oiling as in the past, now it's actually got pressurized oil. So you got to deal with these. This was a bolt-on yoke transmission. So I have ground off. I put this in the lathe. Just hold my grinder right here and remove the O-ring grooves are now a regular slip yoke, Turbo 400 size will fit. And at this point I have overhauled the rear unit. It was in excellent shape, fortunately. And just like a Turbo 400, I'm gonna dual feed the directs and the steps are the same. I've left the second seal back on the center support off. I will leave the center seal, the drum seal, out of the direct drum, and I've drove a 3 h cup plug into the right-hand hole, right hand as you're looking forward. That's the center support bolt. I put a 3 h cup plug in there. I will not be using any kind of shift kit. I'm gonna do my own. I'll drill the separator plate. Uh, gonna, you know, mechanically, if you will, dual feed it, you know, this way. A lot of the shift kits, uh, you have to go with what they tell you to do and you're kind of locked in after the modifications. They have you drilling, you know, other lube holes and such. So, uh, to each their own, whatever works for you personally, uh, especially for this, and if this transmission will have to be tuned afterwards anyway. You can, if you're looking for shift feel, you can certainly adjust that, make it as mean as you want, you know, with your laptop. I was able to pry out the nail that holds the shift shaft in, do that whole operation, put a new seal in, same seal as the Turbo 400, same installer, and bolt all that back together so a functional air pack works. I put in dash six cooler lines, and if I can find it, again, the rear one has to have this tube and there's a seal in the center support you need to change that this tube slides into. Uh, you saw me when I was stripping it, I forgot this and I pulled on the center support and I actually bent that seal. It's somewhat fragile, easy to change, it's just a metal clad seal, drives right into the center support to accept that. Because that, that's where your pressurized lubrication is going to come from. This is coming back from the torque converter and the cooler. Out for the torque converter, back from the cooler. So. so while we're right in this area, again, this was a bolt-on yoke, two-wheel drive transmission. I removed the O-ring groove. So a regular slip yoke, 
will not interfere in its travel. They made these in slip yoke two wheel drive versions. In four wheel drive, this uh, plug that in two wheel drive is feeding pressurized oil through a tiny hole in this seal. In four wheel drive, that seal, drive in seal is solid. There's no hole, there's no pressurized oil needed back here for the transfer case. So this seal is still present and this one gets blocked off solid in the four wheel drive version. And the tone ring for the rear speed sensor that you need on a two wheel drive is sometimes still there on a four wheel drive transmission, sometimes it's not. You can buy it, press it on. Uh, the easiest way to find out is to just pull the plug out where the rear speed sensor would be on a four wheel drive and see if you can see a tone ring, you know, a bunch of notches. Or you spin it, you're watching the notches go by. That's how it reads speed. All right, plenty of work still ahead of me. I stripped it section by section in the last video. All the sections are sitting on the bench. And I'm taking each one, one by one, overhauling them and putting them back in the case. Because I'm jumping around on this particular one, that's one way to do it. You can strip it all apart as you tear it down. That's actually smarter in some ways because you can see if there's any hidden damage. Uh, in this case, it was not hardly, well, there's hardly any material in the pan, so I don't suspect I'm going to find any, you know, hide pots damaged. So far, everything is beautiful, so... Have a great day. Stay cool or dry or whatever your situation is weather-wise in your area. And I'll catch you in a couple days.